and this is a question for for the group. Um, you know, all of you are very active in reaching out to form partnerships with the industry. Um, but what do you see as the government's role in in educating the industry or educating the private sector about why they need need space uh, based technologies? Um, kind of going along with the, the the idea, a lot of people, and I agree with the statement, say that in in twenty years, almost every major company or corporation that has global business will be a space company in some regards because they will have space assets. Like, what is the government's responsibility in educating businesses on how to get how to prepare for twenty years down the road? Um, I'll start um, with you, Ethan. Yeah, I'm very keen to take that one on. Um, Yep. It's interesting, you know, companies don't necessarily see them as, say themselves as space companies, but, you know, my own simple analogy, you turn space off and one of those things on Earth you're not able to do. Right. And you play that into the equation and literally everyone and anyone is a, uh, a space user in one way or the other. So I think that's the fundamental aspects of it. The issue for me is the dialogue with, you know, I give you this old adage that if you left it to industry to provide the regulatory framework it would be one page if you left it to government it would be a thousand pages it needs to be a conversation that understands that we government understand where the challenges the limitations the issues are from a industry perspective and work that through but also from an international perspective the other challenge that we've got is that there is not a regulatory race to the bottom and how do we manage that relationship with key international partners and ensure that we've got the correct uh, level of regulatory? I have no issue with competition, international competition or, you know, within national state boundaries as well. But crucially, having a, a level of regulatory environment that is uh, a, a minimum, basically. And then the challenge with that is then how do you frame that and what are the conditions and the context that can be provided? So. For me, the key challenge is to make sure we've got a single unified whole of government approach and response back to those issues. The regular dialogue and conversations with industry, whether they think themselves space or not, they all are, and in fact, all will be, or will rely on space-enabled technology and capabilities in the future. And as a result, for their future growth model, their business model, it will they will be required to have that engagement and that dialogue. And then there are the those more challenging questions in relation to spectrum, the challenging relationship between the defense and military, civil and military aspects of that relationship. And how do we continue to protect space from the UK's perspective as critical natural infrastructure? I'll stop okay. there. I'd, I'd love to, so I agree with, with everything. I think it was very well stated. Thank you all for that. Uh, I wanna just jump in and emphasize a few points there, right? So. So completely agree with the consensus that, but I think it's consensus panel here that that every company will be a space uh, company, and and frankly, almost already is. Right? So uh, yeah, I think in some sense, I'm not too worried about about pushing that. I think that is that is occurring, and that is quickly becoming a case of you're either a company that recognizes that, or you're a company that's that that, that that's putting yourself at risk. Uh, I think where the government. Uh, and the, the dialogue between government and industry becomes particularly important and, and often, you know, covered this well is uh, there's a few places, you know, that one page regulatory uh, rule is going to be, it's, it's not going to be sufficient for what we need, right? I, we don't want to go to the 10,000 page version either, but uh, I'll point at two particular areas of, of high interest to us, uh, to myself and my program. Right. There are fundamental resources we have to share. Spectrum is a classic example of that, right? If we leave it as a complete free-for-all, you know, use whatever spectrum you want, none of us will work, right? Because we'll just we'll just stomp on each other's transmission. So so those shared resources like spectrum, it's very important to have that dialogue to make good use of that. I, I think the other the other piece that comes in there is uh is cybersecurity. And uh, we've seen this happen in in many industries that we you know, in the push to roll out the great new thing, right? The, the great new revenue generator, if you're on the commercial side, security is never, security is rarely a revenue generator, right? And in the rush to, in the rush to commercialize and the rush to get the thing out there, you know, like, you know what, let's get it working. If it's truly successful, we'll worry about the security piece and bolt security on later. 
We can't do that. We have to build security in from the beginning. Bolting security on after you have the system deployed uh, is is ineffective. It, it's extremely expensive and it gets us in trouble. So I think two important roles for the government in that dialogue are looking at those shared resources, Spectrum being a, a classic example of that, and and encouraging you know that that thinking of you know hey, this is going to succeed, this is going to become critical. And when we do that, what are we thinking about the, the security so that it's not easily disrupted and it, it will really provide that service? So security spectrum sharing, you know, security sharing, I think, is a great place for that dialogue. Yeah.